All right. <laughs> hey, friends, it is Lisa Mason Ziegler. And as you can see, we are coming to you from a very different spot in my building. This is where we're kicking the show off. And welcome. We're going to be having a tour of this grow room in the show today. Then we're going to have easy arranging with my sis, Susie Q, um, and what's blooming on the farm. And I'm always amazed. I think we're having nothing, and we have so many beautiful flowers to actually show you. And we are going to have the fan favorite items and things we are using now. And remember, friends, for those folks that are watching us in app, we are going to have a giveaway. As well as at the end of the show, we're going to have that live Q&A like we always do. And remember that when you see something in the grow room that you have a question about, post it. And the way you do that is put at Lisa, put your question, and then the team is going to gather those all up and select a couple for me to actually answer. So before we get started, um, love it when you guys hit that share button that's down at the bottom of your screen in app. And that way you can invite your friends, let people know that we're here. We totally depend on you guys to do that because it really, really works, right? We have so many new people joining us each and every week. So a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Um, so please be sure to check your email and your phone number here in the app um, that there's no typos because we have to have both pieces of that to be able to ship you anything. And it's a frequent issue we run into, so I would suggest you just check it and make sure you're set up and ready to go. Now remember that um, seed packet only orders ship for free here inside the app only. That's not on the website. That's just here in our garden shop on the app. Um, and products um, that are here in the app have a cap of $9.95 shipping. And we ship to all 50 of the United States, you guys. Remember that, right? So if you um, are joining us here on social media, um, we are so glad that you have found us. But what you need to know is that we have a phone app. The phone app is free, and it's super easy to download, and you have so many other functions. So you can go search your phone's app store, Gardener's Workshop, and download it and pop back over here and you won't miss a thing. It doesn't take but about 20 seconds to download it and come back. Um, but in the app, you can do things like build a favorites list. More importantly, you can enter the giveaway, which I'll be talking about a couple times during the show, as well as you can participate in the comments um, with all the other viewers, which is really a happening hot place to be sometimes. That's really a lot of fun. Um, and so we love for you to do that. All right, friends. So we always sell out of specific things or a seed packet variety at every show. So if you do go to a product to add a product and it says, sorry, I stock, get notified. You might want to hit that button because all that means is we're going to send you a little notification because sometimes the team, um, is going to be bringing over more stock if it's available from our big website. So don't miss out on that, and that's all that means. And lastly, for housekeeping, I'm getting a couple of connection poor signals in here. Um, if you are one of our online course students, we love it when you post the sunflower emoji. Those are people identifying themselves as our family, right? So we love it when you do that, and now friends, the giveaway, I am giving away another $25 store credit this week. So hit that button that says giveaway now, and that'll put you on the list. You do have to be in app to be able to participate. So we'll pick that one lucky winner that has to be present at the end of the show. So the other thing I want to remind everybody of, we have some seeds um, packets that we're retiring for many different reasons, but there's a whole category and they're discounted and it's only here in the app. You won't find that on the website. They're already priced as they're marked as priced. Um, and it's only a handful and they're big discounts. So you don't want to miss out on that. And if in the app, you'll find, um, there's tabs across the top. 
that is one of the tabs and that's where you're going to find them all. So friends, I am really happy that um, we are here in the grow room. I mean, there's just so much technology involved in all of this show that this was really difficult, but we have done it and we um, just want to share this room. So first off, this room is in my big building, which is basically just an oversized garage. This particular room is 10 by 10 feet square and it has a door on it. And that leads into the big room where you always see me filming from, right? So one of the best things about this room having a door is that's how I can control the air temperature in here. For cool flowers, I'm looking for like 65 to 70 degree air temperature for the best germination and growing. And so by leaving this door open at this point in time, that keeps that temperature very steady in here, but when I'm doing warm season tender annuals and I want it warmer in here, I want it more like 75 to 85 to even 90 degrees in here by simply shutting that door because there's windows on both sides. This room is on a corner of this building. There's windows on both sides that we don't rely on the light, but we definitely rely on the sunshine to warm this room up. Um, so this room is currently 65 to 70 degrees. So I want to start right here, sister. Um, we're going to start here on the um, heat mat area. So I have a table here, which um, is just a, a makeshift thing that my daddy made for me. And it's got our, our super-sized um, heat mat on it, which you'll find that over on our big website. And these are our weekly sunflowers. This is one of our last week's. Um, so you can see that the sunflowers are sitting here on it. Now here on the heat mat, this is where our burlap is that I use to cover my, I don't cover sunflowers, but if I was, that simply just means doing that, y'all. And in the morning when I would come in, if these were soil blocks, I would just roll this back. I would do my watering chores and then I would put it back on, right? Um, and then also... When I'm starting cool season hardy annual trays, I place, these are cookie cooling racks. You've heard me speak of them before. These literally were my mom's. Um, and we literally just set them right here on the heat mat and then the trays would go on this. By creating about one inches of air space between the heat mat and the bottom of that, it just cools that heat mat down just a smidgen well, cool season hardy annuals definitely need warmth to sprout and break dormancy, but they don't need it hot, right? So we have the cookie cooling racks. I'm just looking at all of my notes I'm going to do. So let's jump over here, sister, um, and let's look at this top. Um, so these are the stainless steel racks that we just get them at big box stores, right? Um, and I have a couple of different types of lights in this room. And I'll just make a blanket statement. The distance between your lights and the top of the trays depends on what lights you have. These are T8s. These are the ones, um, we sold these for many, many years and the company finally just, it's not available anymore. And you can see how close they are because they don't overheat. Um, and But you have to find that out for your specific um, grow lights and there are so many different ones I couldn't begin to actually go through that so this is the top shelf and I want to just show you this is our sticky trap you hear me talking about fungus gnats often um, so this is these are just wooden blocks that have a little um, trench in them and I just lay my sticky traps right there and just put it right in between think about the gnats flying back and forth this is a great way to trap them I can also just lay them right here on my trays. Both of those work really, really well. Um, and so the, these green trays that everybody always asks us about are available over on our website. They're not available normally here in the app. But what I really wanted to show you guys is I grow funky stuff on my soil blocks. That's a very common question and concern we get. And look here. Can y'all see the white? That's algae or mold, whatever you want to call it. And it happens to all of us. I know the day that this happened, I left water in the tray. Um, and I have not found 
that to actually affect my seedlings. What does affect my seedlings is what causes that to grow, and that is constant moisture. They don't dry out. I left water in the tray, and that's what grew it. That constant moisture is what causes seedling troubles, not the actual mold or algae that is a result of that. Um, so this is the big picture of these, and I was going to show you how I watered. My watering can is here. So this, I have a couple of watering cans that I use. Depends on what I'm doing. I have this long spout, which you'll see that in the show, I think. Um, but I also use this large gallon. And literally, friends, I just, can y'all see me? You can. Um, I literally just put a little bit in, and by the time I go the full circle of doing all of these shelves, I go back to the beginning and put my eyeball on every tray. And it doesn't take any time at all. And literally, that's how I water. Um, and so I would go through and do this entire, I have a whole nother stand over here behind me that's loaded. I'd water all that and then I'd come back to the beginning and just look at each tray to make sure there's no sand and water. There is, I pour it off. So friends, what else can I want to show some varieties? Like I'm looking at this one, yeah. it's really leggy. That might scare me personally. Yeah. yeah, like this? Yeah. So this is Sweet William. Sweet William famously will lay down and grow kind of funny, and that actually happens to us too. But this particular tray is actually looking pretty good. Um, and these are getting ready. We're just waiting for the hurricane rain to pass. All of these will be going outdoors to start getting hardened off and getting ready to be planted. Um, and look at this. This is Minarda Lombata. And these were just born, these were just sown on the 18th. Today is the 27th. 27. So these are just kind of coming along. What's and in the swift blocker over here? Swift blocker? Yes. Track? So let me show this first. These are the seeds for any of you that are on in my club. These are the fever few seeds that we sowed on the 18th, which was a Wednesday. And look at that. That's Vegmo single. Love that stuff. So Kelly's asking. So this is, um, some Sorinthi that we've just sown on the 24th, and it's just starting to pop. I took it off the heat and moved it under light because they're starting to come along. This is the Mini 27, and this is just a great comparison of why you've always go smaller. This is 27 little containers. This is 100, and these will go to the garden in this block. So if you have a space issue like I do, there's just no comparison. But when the seed is big, you have to use the larger block. So I wanted to show you one more thing, and that is this room does have, you don't have to see it, there's a drain in the floor, and that really um, was part, I mean, I knew when I started, built this building, um, that we were gonna use this room for that. And I wanna also, Suzanne, show this whole area behind you there over here. So here's another great tip. This is a 13 gallon kitchen trash can that I keep full of water and this is how I fill my watering can. How much quicker is that than actually stopping to turn the water on and filling it all up? So that is how we fill our watering can. There's my fungus net, my fertilizer, you know, I have all kinds of kitchen appliances that I use in my grow room. I use this to lift um, blocks, of course, fungus gnat stuff, and measuring tools. Everything should be measured. And so if you have questions, just remember, at Lisa, put it in the comments, and then we'll address as many of those as we can. And here's that other um, tray of just, this is status. And that is really, I mean, look how great that is. And this is just really, um, this is my favorite thing, y'all, is baby plants. The next favorite thing I have is when they get planted out in the garden and there's just bed after bed with rows and rows and rows of transplants. All right, and so here, you can see, is a sticky trap in use. Those are fungus gnats and a fly. So that's why they should just always be in here. And so, friends, we just have all different kinds of varieties going on in here, and 
this is my grow, this is my dream grow room. And this whole room is on a timer, a timer that an electrician installed on the wall. So I don't have to have lots of individual timers, which I did have um, for many, many years. So I am so grateful for my um, space. And um, anyway, so I'm glad I was able to show it to you today. Now, remember, we always start out with the Cut Flower Handbook. Friends, this is the book, whether you're a home gardener or a flower farmer, um, this is a resource that is just a, a powerful resource that you'll use over and over again. It features 66 um, different flowers, plus how a cutting garden works, and then how to follow all the steps. So I'd love to sign one of these for you. As well as my book, Vegetables Love Flowers, really not only tells you how to have a small cutting garden and a vegetable patch and why that will invite a lot of great creatures into your garden, the flowers do, that benefit your veggies, right? Um, and this book is my garden and philosophy of doing it without chemicals. So I'd love to sign it. And this book actually comes with a video book study as well when you purchase the book from us. Would love to sign one. And then, of course, friends, the book that started it all, Cool Flowers. 10th year anniversary this year. I'd love to sign a book for you. Um, this is the introduction. Read it in a weekend. No question, y'all. It's a little book. It just gets you down and gets you up and going. Um, then the Cut Flower Handbook just gives you more big picture and how to actually succession plant. So the Cool Flower Handbook also comes with a video book study, and I would love to sign one for you. So All right, now we're sending it over. To All Susie. right, now we're going to send it over to Susie Q. Over. Hi guys, welcome, welcome. Hope everybody is safe in this stormy weather outside today. I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about some of the flower arranging tools that we have um, that make it just super easy for anybody, anyone, to be able to arrange some flowers. So we're going to do the tip of the day. And first, let me say, I have never met two flowers that didn't like each other. All flowers are beautiful. Don't get stuck on this flower doesn't go with this flower. They all go together. They're all beautiful. Just put them together. It'll be okay. We love them all. And you get better at arranging if you practice more often. So be sure to get flowers regularly. Play with them. Do different things. And the real secret is just cut them shorter. They always look better when they're shorter. Um, you want to check all the angles. Is this arrangement going to be seen from the front? Is it going to be sitting in a table where there'll be people on all sides? You want to make sure that it looks good from wherever people are going to be viewing it from. Um, the greenery foliage always wants to be stripped completely from your stems that are going in the water. The greenery in the water causes the water to get dirty really quick. Greenery always fluffs up any arrangement. So if you're buying flowers and straight stems somewhere, be sure to get plenty of greenery. It just helps everything look beautiful and it makes the other flowers stand out more. Um, you always want to use a clean container. We always say that if you're not willing to drink water out of it, don't put your flowers in it because the bacteria in that old vase that you did not rinse out or wash out last time you had flowers in it are going to start killing your new flowers as soon as you put them in that water. So be sure to use a really, really clean container. Um, we already talked about stripping all the leaves off. Flower food. Flower food is very important, especially for garden flowers. You want to put flower food in. It helps kill that bacteria in the water. It also has a, um, extra stuff in it to make the flowers happy and want to open up and progress along. So flower food is imperative to making your flowers last longer. Um, if your flowers are not drinking water, then they're clogged. You need to cut some more of the stem off. That's why we always tell you to recut the stems whenever you're arranging or when you get flowers home, cut stem off. Every few days, if you cut a little stem off, that helps as well. It helps them uh, be able to drink the water and then they can benefit from that flower food. Um, you want to make sure that you water them regularly, especially garden flowers. They will drink a vase dry in a day. So every day, check your flowers, make sure that the water is actually in the container and then change the water every few days. If you have extra flower food, you can put new flower food in it or at least clean water um, will get you some life on those flowers. 
You never want to put an arrangement in direct sunlight. As soon as we cut the flowers out in the field, we try to get them into the shade as soon as possible. Once they're cut, the sun does nothing but fade them and um, just makes them not be as pretty. So keep them out of direct light if they're in your house, away from the window. And then you want to check your arrangement. When you're checking the water every day or every few days, just remove any deadheaded flowers that have faded. The other flowers are probably going to last longer. Some last longer than others. So just look at it and fluff it up every few days, um, and you'll get more enjoyment out of it that way. All right, the deal of the day. The deal of the day is 20% off bouquet sleeves. In up only while supplies last through 8 a.m. Eastern Sunday, and that's on the 29th. Now we are going to do a little demo here. What do we have up first? The craft sleeve. This is the 12 inch. Do we have something smaller we can put in these 12? I've got something. I've got something right here, Kelly. Okay. So this is our 12 inch. And this is what we used to use for uh, like straight bunches or for a little teeny bouquet. I just happen to have a little bouquet I made here that will slip in here. It's real simple. Just poof it open and slide it in. And not only does it protect the flowers, it just makes people be able to tell what's in a bouquet, that this actually is a bouquet. We would use another rubber band here, and you want to make sure it's out of your water so that it doesn't get wet. And these are great to have the kids draw on. You can put your farm label or sticker on here. Um, and people love it when they see the craft paper because they can recycle it and you're not wasting. So this is the 12-inch craft sleeve. A 10-pack is on sale for $4.20. A 50-pack is on sale for $17.56. And uh, be sure to take advantage of that before Sunday morning. Now, up next, we have the 20-inch. So the 20-inch craft sleeve, we're going to put this big bunch of um, celosia in here. It's just beautiful. 20 inches a bit bigger. This is what we would use for a big bouquet or a big bunch. We have these beautiful celosias today. We're going to stick in there. And the same thing. This is great for the kids to draw on. It's a special occasion. Or you can use a sticker or your farm stamp on it. And again, it protects the flowers. But it just kind of helps them stand out. Um, and it just makes them beautiful. Rubber band here out of the water. And a 10 pack is um, $5, and a 50 pack is $19.96 on sale. So, next we have the clear sleeve. I'm going to use the same bouquet. So, let me take this off. There we go. Okay. All right, Kelly, if you want to assist. So, the clear sleeve sometimes, come this way a little bit. There you go. Sometimes we um, used to use, turn around, grocery stores. We used to sell the grocery stores that required clear sleeves. And it really does let you see the flowers better. And it's also easier to use. You have this on, we used to hang it on the end of a rack. Or you could buy a stand for the clear sleeves. And you just slide it in and pull it down and they're done. So it's a little bit easier to use. Um, but some people, of course, would prefer the craft over plastic, trying not to get um, more plastic into the world. But it really is easy to use. And again, it shows the flowers really, really well. The clear sleeves, 20 inch, are 50 pack for $23.96. Now, other arranging items we have, we have the decorative sleeves, which we should have done first. Because <laughs> now we're going to need one of those sleeves back, Kelly. All right, so we have these pretty green sleeves. They have a slit cut in the middle and you just slide it over the end of the stems and pull it down like this. And then we're going to stick this in a craft bag and just see what that does. It just adds a little pizzazz to your bag. Um, it makes it so beautiful. These sleeves are 10 pack for $7.95, 50 pack for $31.95, and you can use them in the clear or the craft. And the other thing that I discovered is, you know, we're always trying to reuse our gift bags. And do you know you can use this in a gift bag as well and then be able to reuse it instead of having to throw away tissue paper. So that's really a, a neat idea as well. All right, next up we have our stem stripper. The stem stripper 
It's great for stripping roses and thorns, but you can use it to strip anything that has leaves on it. I'm going to show you how we strip this. It's got a little hole. You just stick that over the stem and you simply pull down and it just takes everything off. So it's just a little easier on your hands if you have a lot of stripping to do. And um, the stripper is $19.95 and it's just a keeper. It's a tool you'll keep forever. All right, so next we have the new florist knife. I'm trying not to cut myself. I actually don't use this, but we see a lot of florists and a lot of events we would do there would be florists there giving talks and they all use these knives and they simply take their stem and cut it like that and super super sharp so this is a great new addition and we only have a few of these left they're $34.95 and it is a Swiss Army knife you can impress your uh, significant other who might be into tools with your Swiss Army knife tool for cutting flowers. All right, next we have the vase brush. Now the vase brush, it's made of kind of a foamy plastic and it is very long and it is bendable. So you can get it into any vase size and scrub, scrub, scrub. We also use it for hummingbird feeders, humidifiers. We use it for the irrigation on the farm and you just simply have to wash it, hang it up to dry, and it's ready to go again. Um, and if you have trouble with a vase that has a stain you can't get out, even with this, try an effortant tablet. You just put the effortant tablet in there with a little water and let it sit, and it cleans it just like it was a denture. And then you can take your brush in there and, and get it out the rest of the way. So the, the vase brush is $12.95. And um, we've sold those for years at shows. They're very popular and we all have them. All right, next we have the Clear Oasis Tape. So this is the Clear Oasis Tape. I'm gonna have to take my gloves off to do this. And the thing about it being clear is that you really can't see it once it's in an arrangement. You can see that I've started my grid here and I was gonna finish it up with one last. Finding the end is the same as finding the end on regular tape. It is not always easy. I can't find the end. So you just put the strip across and you stick it down a little bit on the side so that it stays nice and grippy. Okay, I found it. So I don't know if y'all can see this, but you simply just stick it over the edge and then you cut it. If you're having trouble seeing because there's comments, you can swipe left or right and it'll get your comments out of the way and then you'll be able to see. So the tape just makes a grid, and then you take flowers. My clippers are on my hip. You just take flowers, and they hold your flowers up. Can I get that big box down there? Yep. No, the, the big wooden box down there. I'm sorry. Let me get this up higher so you guys can see it. Okay, I'm going to take the little box now. All right, now y'all can see that, can't you? All right, so... So these are going to hold your flowers in place. That was a little too long. And it just, this is what florists use all the time to make their arrangements. And it just holds flowers where you want them and keeps them from sliding around. And it comes in 60 yards. 60 yards is quite enough to last you for a long time unless you're arranging a lot of flowers. That's a nice little uh, beginning to a fall arrangement. There you go. The clear oasis tape is $8.95 and um, it can turn any little container into a beautiful arrangement. All right, next up we have the Easy Arranger. This might be a little tall for this one. Let me take the box out. Sorry, we're playing musical boxes. I want to make sure you guys can see all of this. Get my little box back. There we go. All right, can you see that? So the Easy Arranger 
comes flat like this. And you simply poof it up in the middle a little bit and put it over your vase and then put the edges down over it. And it does essentially the same thing as the clear tape. It makes a little grid on the top of your container and then it will hold your flowers in place exactly where you want it. And this one will hold big stems, little stems, any height you want. This is the perfect girlfriend gift. We sold a ton of these when we did shows. They are just the best thing since sliced bread as far as arranging flowers go. So the Easy Arranger, it comes in a one pack for $8.95, a two pack for $15.50, or a three pack for $21.50, I'm sorry. But wait, there's more. We have a new Easy Arranger, and it's the same thing. This one, the the original one was what size? Six. The original one, this is a six inch, but now we have a three pack that has a four, five, and a six inch in it. So you get three of them. And the three pack is $21.50. And you could certainly get this and give one to three different friends, package them in a little organza bag or something. But these would just fit a smaller container, like the top of a mason jar. Smaller one would probably fit a little better on top of a mason jar or a vase of that size. So the Easy Arranger, new size. It's a three pack with a four inch, five inch, and six inch, and it's $21.50. So stock up on these great, great gifts for anyone who loves flowers. Okay, next we have mason jars. All right, so we have mason jar frogs. This is a little frog that goes on top. Susie will do the bronze first, okay? So this is the bronze, and again, it has that little grid right on top of the container. And the bronze, we only have a few left. They're $8.95 for a single pack, and there's only a few, and I don't think we can get them anymore. So if you like the look of the bronze, be sure to, to grab it now. But what I'm going to show you the demo in is the chicken wire. And this is a little more rustic. It looks just like chicken wire. And again, this is, we use this the same way as the other ones. You simply stick it down and it holds the flowers up and it will make any arrangement seem bigger and better and be where you want it. Usually you get an arrangement and you take it home and you put it in a vase and it just goes whoop and all the flowers fall to the side and none stick up in the middle and it's just not as easy as taking it home and putting it in a vase. But this is simple and easy and you can do this yourself and just keep filling them with flowers until it looks the way you want it. Let me grab some more flowers, Kelly. Let's look there. Give me some tansy. Tansy, here we go. This is tansy. This we went, Lisa went foraging for this is in our native border, but it can be invasive, but we usually cut it enough to keep it under control because um, it is great in arrangements. I don't think that's a native sister. It's just no, it's a not. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then you wanted to talk about this, right? This yeah. is. So, you know, we're, we're on the cusp of getting a ton of rain. This is not normally a cut flower. This is called a Japanese anemone. It's a perennial. And these were kind of hanging low. So I cut them for her to use the bud form for some texture because once it blooms, it just doesn't last very long. But that's kind of one of the ways I get ready for hurricane winds and a lot of rain is cut stuff that's like already starting to look a little crooked or um, and saved it from that. But that's really cool, sis. So this is like, what, less than 10 flowers and already you can see it's taken shape. It just makes less flowers go further. So the chicken wire uh, mason jar frog is a one pack for $8.95, two pack for $15.50, or a three pack for $21.95. All right, and next up we have our coated floral netting. So this is the floral netting. It comes in a sheet that is 12 inches by 48 inches. And it's kind of like 
a gentle chicken wire that's coated so that it doesn't rust. And we have been using the same piece for church flowers, Lisa has, for a very long time. And you simply just ball it up like this. I use them in crocks that you can't see through. And then we stick the flowers in. You can use big flowers, short flowers. You want to make sure that your netting is nice and tight against the sides so that the flowers stay up. And you can take just a few. These are hydrangeas that came from the hydrangea grove. Take just a few flowers and make them really put on a show and stand up where normally it would take a lot of flowers to fill a crock like this. So this is the floral netting and it's $7.95 and it's something you should always keep in your toolkit um, to really again help flowers go a long way. All right next up we have our velcro plant ties. Now these are great for any viney thing for tomatoes. We usually cut them around 12 inches long. It's Velcro. It sticks to itself wherever you stick it. So one side is smooth and one side is sticky. We cut them, like I said, around 12 inches so that you can always have a good size to use. You just wrap it around itself and then when you're done, you just simply pull it off. But my favorite use for this is to put the garland on my, um, on my stairs because this does not harm my wood banisters. So you can just Velcro it around, it's green, so it just, you know, you can't even see it. And it just comes right off at the end. We love this Velcro plant tides. It's half inch wide, 50 foot long. You cut it to any length you'd like, and it's reusable. We keep them year after year. We just have a ball of them, and we just pull off a strip as we need them. And it's $7.95. Best stocking stuff forever, and I know it's early to be talking that kind of stuff, but we have to think ahead great gift. All right, so next we have the Stay Put Candle Grips. Now, the Stay Put Candle Grips are the best, especially if you entertain, because we all know how irritating it is when you try to put a candle in a candle holder and it does not want to stay. Let me get my little box. So you simply take this little grippy, it's like a little grippy sponge, you put it in the top of your candle holder and you just push your candle down and guess what? It stays exactly where you put it and you can reuse them over and over again. If you have big candles, just put a two or three around the edges and push your big candle into your holder and it'll do the same thing. So this is a necessity. Everybody needs to have this in their drawer and they're $8.95 and um, they're also a great gift. All right, next up we have the candle ring vase. So, didn't put water in this. It's looking a little droopy. So the candle ring vase is this little vase. It's plastic and has a little top. The little top comes off. The flowers generally look better if you put water in it. I forgot to put water in it. My gumfrina is droopy. We'll have to put some new gumfrina in there. But it just slides right over your candle and then you can just go even out to the yard and just grab a few little flowers here and there, violas or anything you have growing out in the yard and make a beautiful little arrangement and take a simple candlestick to a new level. I mean, these are just little precious. And I found that if you cut the stem a little longer than you think you need and then put them in at an angle, um, it helps them stay in. Sorry, I didn't realize you couldn't see. Let me get something a little bit funner. Is there teensy? Okay, I just love this tansy. All right, so here we're gonna just slide it in at an angle. And that's a little too tall. Let's make it a little shorter. Like I said, arranging, you just have to practice. Just keep doing it until you get it right. And there she is. And we'll put a little bit more. Here's some green that isn't quite blooming yet. Put it in the other direction. And so now you have a beautiful little arrangement for your table and all you're using is a very, very few flowers. So the candle ring vase is a two pack and it's $14.95. And um, again, it makes a great gift. Keep all of these things on hand and have a girlfriend gift ready at any time. Great hostess gift if you're doing parties. 
all right, next up we're going to do the herb metal drying rack. And this is here behind me. I don't know if you can see it. Where is the, hand me that one so I can show. So this is what it looks like up close. And it's a rack with all of the, your dried flowers hanging on there. We dry all of our flowers. So we don't compost them when we're done and we don't sell them or can't give them away. We dry them and we use them in the winter and make wreaths and different things. And this is the perfect companion for a home grower that wants to hang them and yet they're beautiful. And you can make a little, um, little hanging arrangement out of them while they're drying. And then you can see back here, we have quite a few things hanging on them. I don't know if you can see. But, that looks um, pretty good. They will hold quite a few flowers. So um, that, again, is a great gift or get one for yourself, $26.95. Next up, we have our espresso watering can. Now, this watering can is the wonderful gentle flow that you can use to either water your seedlings, water your house plants, or to water your arrangements because you need to add water to your arrangements because they drink so much, right? And this lets you do it very gently without making a mess. This is stainless steel. It holds approximately two cups. But my favorite thing to do with it... Don't cut your finger off. Mm -hmm. My favorite thing to do with it is to put an arrangement in it. And we're going to cut this one right now. I was just measuring. We're going to whack this off. And that's the secret. Shorter flowers... Not short enough. Short flowers are... Um, just seem to look better. So there you go. You can leave it. Whoops. God, I do have a dangler. He didn't like it. And that would be perfect on a coffee table, an end table, a dining room table, and you can see the tops, right? Yep, you can. Hostess and that's gift. and it's a great hostess gift. And that is the secret to flowers, especially at a table, is you want to make the arrangements so that you can see the person you're talking to. You don't want to have to be doing this around the flowers to be able to talk to the person across from you. So shorter arrangements let you see the tops of the flowers, and they also let you see the person that you're talking to. And if there's someone you don't care for, then maybe make a really tall arrangement. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, sister. I mean, she just does, is the best basics make beautifulness, right? Um, so I want to talk to you about conditioning flowers. So first up is our CVBN tablets. This is a pre-treatment, not a flower food. This is what we put into our harvest buckets, one tablet in each bucket that has a gallon of water, and we harvest into it. So the first drink a stem gets is bacteria-free water. And it, you can, um, they, the stem should sit in this for four hours, but it can sit into this for 72 hours, meaning you don't have to rush to move them on. And then when we move them on to our retail customers, we give them flower food to finish the job. This adds a couple of days of life to your actual um, flowers um, in the vase. This just keeps the bacteria at bay as long as possible. Now, next up is our quick dip. Quick dip, just like CBBN, is not flower food. This is a hydrator. This is for when you have wilty stuff that just didn't hydrate whether that's basil or a hydrangea or anything, we put just a, um, a very shallow container full, ready mix. You're not max mixing water with it. And just recut the stems and dip it in. And I think it tells you for 15 seconds. It has the directions right on the side of it. It stimulates and opens up the veins, if you want to think it that way, for water to get up the stems, right? The other thing I do with this is those crops that are chronically wilty, um, I'll put two tablespoons of this in my harvest bucket along with the CVBN tablet. CVBN kills bacteria. This helps to prevent them from wilting. So that works really wonderful. Um, so this is Quick Dip. It's a set, um, 16 ounce, I believe it is, for $17.95. All right, so flower food. We have two different types of flower food. There's the little packets. We use the larger packets because most people's vases are bigger than a pint. Um, and so the bulb cut flower food is made to be used in the vase for flowers that were grown from a bulb or a rhizome. Think dahlias, 
daffodils. And the difference between this and just regular old flower food is this has an additional hormone. And that hormone helps on tulips, helps those bulb grown crops for the foliage to actually stay greener through the base process. So this is a 50 pack for $11.95 or a 100 pack for $19.95. Now, if you're like me and we don't basically grow anything really from bulbs, this is just the fresh cut flower food. Same product minus the hormone. Same deal. 50 pack is $11.95. 100 pack is $19.95. And there's also the smaller size um, available for 100 pack for $12.95. Flower food continues what those other two pre-treatments do. It has a biocide in it. It also has a pH balancer to keep your plants, your stems, drinking up the water, and it has nutrition. So this really helps your flowers um, to continue to have a great base life. If you're a flower farmer, you can use holding tea bags. Holding solution is exactly what it says. If you're sitting on flowers for a day or more, then you might want to consider putting a tea bag into your buckets. This has everything that flower food has except it's minus a little bit of the nutrition. You don't want to push your stems while you've got them or your florist has them for the buds to open prematurely. You want to give them just enough nutrition to keep them healthy looking and happy and lasting a long time. And that's what tea bags do. These come in two sizes. Small is for those like black supermarket buckets, which basically hold about a half a gallon. A hundred of those is $18.95. When you're using five gallon buckets, the large size has a hundred in it is $36.95. And you literally just drop the tea bag into the bucket. All right, so the items that we looked at in the grow room, first off, the first thing is how did I make all those blocks? Number one customer favorite is our Soul Block Maker Kit. So I'm going to show you all the pieces. This comes with five of these large trays that hold three of the clusters of 20. It comes with the toothpick, a seed pan, and these wooden plant markers, as well as it comes with the small blocker, which is what you saw in the grow room, and it comes with a six-quart bag of the ready-made blocking mix. And this makes about 500 of those small blocks. And then also you have your choice of either three free packs of seeds come with this kit. You can select either the cool season hardy annual seeds or you can select the warm season tender annual. That's totally your choice. And the kit also includes my complete seed starting um, course made easy. This takes you from beginning to end on soil blocking, direct sowing, pl planting sunflowers and plug trays, and the Swift Blocker, the commercial size. So this has everything in it. The entire kit is $89.95 and it sets you up to get started soil blocking. Um, and this has been a customer favorite forever. Now you saw in the grow room, my fungus gnat um, sticky traps in action. They come in a 10 pack for $19.95. Oh, I'm sorry, this is the set. They are available separately here in the app. So this includes the sticky traps and the mosquito bits. You just add this to your watering can. Both of these together are $19.95, and you can purchase them separately here inside the app. Now, you saw the big trays that I use, which are available over on our website. But here in the app, we um, have the foam reusable trays. This one is called the Mini, and that holds one cluster of 20 of those soul blocks. This is what I use when we're starting tomatoes and peppers, things that we just don't need, 100 of, right? That's $1.95, or a 25 pack is $6.95. Then we have what we call the small. This holds two sets of 20, or two sets of the two inch blocker. This is $2.95 for a five pack, or 25. Um, pack is $12.95. And this is the one that comes in the kit. It holds three sets of 20. It's $3.95 for a set of five or a 25 pack for $15.95. Now you saw my giant heat mat in there. Um, this is the um, starting out size. This will hold four of those um, trays, those um, longer trays you just saw me using. Um, and this has a built-in thermostat. 
and that is triggered off of the air temperature. You plug it in, um, and this is, as I pointed out in there, an incredibly important step, y'all. And that is $39.95. Now, here's that burlap that you saw in the grow room. And see, this is wide weave. You see those big holes that traps moisture but allows air to come in. Now, this comes in a three-by-three three piece, and it's $9.95 for a three-pack, or you can get a single for $3.95. And that just helps to trap moisture, particularly on those surface sown seeds, which we do so many of. And so there's the fertilizer that I put into the watering can once a week. I do Mondays. Um, Neptune's Harvest, I put a tablespoon in, and I just water my plants like I normally do, um, but it has that in there. Um, so love Neptune's Harvest, and you can also use that out in the garden, and all the directions are right on um, the label. And here's that watering can, y'all. This is what we call the long spout. Uh, there's just a couple left. This holds four cups. It's $29.95. We have trouble getting these back in stock, y'all, so grab them while you can. This also makes a great Christmas gift um, for house plants, watering soil blocks, and watering flower arrangements um, without messing up your flowers. All right, so remember, friends, if you want to enter the giveaway, hit that button up at the top right now for the giveaway, which Susie's bringing up, and that'll put you on the list that we select the winner from right at the end of the show. And now, friends, we've got a bunch of flowers to show you. And I always remind people that the secret is to purchase the seeds for flowers when you meet them and you want to grow them. Store them properly using a desiccant pack. Um, this absorbs any moisture inside your airtight container that you keep your seeds in. A two-pack is $2.95. A 10-pack is $9.95. Keep seeds cool and dry, and they will last a really long time. Friends, I'm just gonna slide this over. Look at this guys. <laughs> Look at this. This is persimmon cheap. How much of this do you think you can sell in the fall? This is they're huge. Look how big that one is. There's my hand. <laughs> this stuff is absolutely gorgeous. And we're losing all of our coxcomb when this rain ends. I mean, it is just pounding it out there. Um, so that's persimmon. And this is a paler orange. Look at this one. This is um, Orange Queen Improved. This is just another really great one. And when coxcomb is this big and you get a lot of extended rain, it, it has a lot of little pockets to store water in. Not a good scene, y'all. And so look at this. This is Higyoku. This has got the dark, fold, the dark stem and foliage. But look at that. You need to have a ton of this for July 4th, y'all. It is just so oh incredible. Gosh. I know, they're huge. I mean, we can't keep our hands off these things, y'all. And I only had a few of the Jura Salmon left. Jura Salmon is a seed that we custom grew. Very limited supply. Um, and But it is a soft, salmon-y color. And it is just gorgeous. And then the Kramer's Mix. Um, there's no green in here because the green has really been killed by the rain. Um, but this is the variety Kramer's. It was um, selected for drying qualities. So it has rose and then the deep burgundy. And this is just a really great one for fall, y'all, and for drying. Um, it's that whole kind of romantic color, right? And then I love this one. This is the Corona or the bicolor. Um, and there's just such great variety in here. Um, and again, it's just a great fall addition. And then at the end of our Texas plumes, look at the colors, y'all. These are super tall, big heads. Of course, the fall's not the best. But this is, if I could only grow one plume, this would be my girl. And we also had this custom grown for us, very limited quantities. Um, so it's not like we just order more. <laughs> so don't miss out on the Texas plumes. And then here is an amazing favorite. This is um, Flamingo Feather. And it's just, when it's premature, it's a little blushy color. It is just really a great one. This is actually a different, the Texas plumes are a plumosa. This is a spagata, both celosius, but just different strands. Um, and totally love that. And I didn't have a lot of this to show you, but I wanted to show you, this is Sunday Gold. This, in my garden, is glowing in the dark. 
I mean, this is just a great fall color. So this is Sunday gold and it is gorgeous. And then there's Silphid. And y'all, this is how Silphid should be cut. It's kind of immature, you know, a little bit and it's greeny. You do not want this to get dirty. This is a great, great flower. Now we have a bunch of Gumphrias we've still got coming on. There's the bicolor, the Audra Rose bicolor, which is I have to say that's a customer favorite. They just love two-tone flowers. You know, what's up with that? And then look at this one. This is white. We grow all of these Gumphrina succession plant all throughout the summer. And I love the habit of Audra. And then this is Audra pink. It almost looks like a faded purple. It is really great. And of course, you know, Gumphrina, that's what is hanging back there. All those little bunches I've made with I'm going to try to make a wreath out of for y'all later sometime. And then look at this one. This is Audra Purple Red. It just basically is purple, y'all. But we love the habit of that growth. Don't so much love the QIS Carmine. It's actually a different variety, a different type of Gumphrina. The stems are more brittle. There's less of them. Um, and But this is a great color. This is carmine. It's kind of like a hot pink. And we're still having basil come in. This is the cardinal, which has got, it's much more foliage, thicker, bigger stems. It's got that flat purple maroon kind of flower. Um, but if you have a stick of this, I mean, people either love it or they hate it. And then there's still cinnamon coming along. And the cinnamon is got a darker stem and... Um, you know, that's just a great addition to fall. And then there's some purple ruffles. You know, again, you don't want but one stick of this and something that gets dark fast. But in the right application, this is really beautiful. And friends, azuratum. You, you can never have enough azuratum. It's the most underappreciated, right up there with sunflowers in my book. Um, and if you have small azuratum, you just cluster together three stems in a bouquet instead of spreading them out. And I mean, it just changes everything. And this is the stage to harvest y'all like this, not when it's fuzzy. I hear, um, I was just reading, people have a lot of opinions about the color of this white. It called, it's called white swan. And I will say it's a buttercream color. Um, and, but the cool thing about white swan is there's no foliage fragrance, which is a biggie for people. I love this. I grow this from spring right up until fall. We absolutely love it. And then, of course, we have the stinkers. Look at these. How beautiful. This is the mix. And marigolds, I mean, we could do an hour talk on marigolds. Marigolds are a really important crop when you use them properly. Um, so don't miss out on those guys. And then the zinnias are kind of, you know, calling in the day because of all the rain. But this is the giant cactus mix. We still have a little bit. This is probably our last week of zinnias, I'm going to be willing to say. So that's the giant cactus mix. And then are these made for fall or what? This is the queen lime mix. It has all the queen colors except for that orange-orange color. It's really beautiful. And then here are the Benares giants. While they're still beautiful, they just aren't as big and as voluptuous. The rain is just really weighing on them. So these are the Benares Giants. And then I went out there and cut another piece, y'all, of Love and a Puff. This is a vine that grows on some kind of support, and I absolutely love it. I mean, a vine will hydrate beautifully, but it really gets cool when it turns. This is what it looks like when it ages. And let me just show you. I don't know if we've done this. I can't remember if I've done it on the show or not. Inside each one is a seed. And on that seed is a heart. Can y'all see that? I mean, it's like somebody went in there and painted it. Well, we know he did, but you know what I mean? Is that the coolest thing ever? So Love and a Puff is a great tablescape deal. Now, we've talked several times about Everybody having Sorinthi, which is a cool flower that reseeded in their garden. And I had the same thing. Some of this is just amazingly tall. It's because we had a dry summer, y'all. No diseases, pressure, and pests, right? So 
this is not blooming, but it's a great foliage. You definitely want to plant this in this fall if it's winter hardy in your zone. And then this is the same thing. This is blue pincushion. We kind of left it. And because of drought, we just really got another. It's not really a flush. I would never leave it in the ground again, but it's a part of the garden we just didn't need. But what a great color. I grow all the scabbies. They were in the room that you were seeing in there. And friends, the spinning gourds. I mean, to have baskets of these to take to farmer's market and sell them, let kids do them, have dried ones that you can sell ready for crafting. Um, Susie made little ghosts. We put them on a tree for Halloween. Christmas ornaments. The spinning gourds are amazing. Um, but they need a strong trellis. So, but you definitely want to have them on board for next fall. So many of the things we're looking at right now is all fall stuff. This is mahogany splenda. I mean, I don't want this in June. Nobody does. But now look at that foliage. It looks like a Japanese maple. So beautiful. And then here, this is growing where the spinning gourds grow. They battle it out. This is hyacinth bean. And how about having this? on your tablescape, either in a bouquet or literally just laying on the table. It's really beautiful. Um, so that's hyacinth bean, and that is a warm season vine. Needs, I call it Jack and the Beanstalk, y'all, so be sure to support it. And then we still have Purple Majesty coming. So Purple Majesty kind of looks like a corn plant, um, and it comes out of the leaves kind of green, and that's when you want to cut it when it's just emerging. Um, but this is another great one, and that dries pretty well, too. And there's Harry Balls, y'all. So Harry Balls is Gumpacarpus physicarpus. This is a, this is not a native. It is a monarch hosting plant, and um, it's a great ornamental. We sold tons of this to supermarkets. I mean tons. Um, so we love this. Um, and if you have early frost where you are, you probably can't grow that, um, but it's a good one to try out. Green, red. Okay, so now I want to show you our rooster peppers. Now the rooster peppers are a pepper that was selected for its drying, I mean for its cut flower qualities. And I'm going to show you many different stages, but this is why we absolutely love it. Now this one's been laying down, so let's bring him back up. This is what is unique about this pepper. It's the fact that you can, if you're a grower that's ever tried to grow an ornamental pepper as a cut flower, people just look at you like, are you crazy? It takes forever to strip them. That is not so with the rooster pepper because the foliage is pretty much below the fruit. There you go, friends. Well, I pulled that pepper off. This is a high value cut flower crop. Now, I was asked last week when I was showing it, um, do they continue to turn color? So first off, let's start. So we'll hold this aside. So this is what they look like immature. Here is one stem. Do you have any idea what kind of interest in your bouquets if you put one of these in a bouquet? So last week I showed you some green ones like this. I totally start using them as soon as the fruit's big enough to make a contribution, right? They're super tall. I pinch the heck out of them and they're producing like crazy. So that's green. This is the ones from last week that were green. So they do continue to change color even after you harvested them. So this is the green sample that I showed you last week, right? This is the sample. These, I just cut these this morning. They're, they're some green, some red. I mean, you could use all of these stages in bouquets. You can dry all of these stages. This is the red ones that also have incredible use. Kathy Jones of Periwinkle Farm in North Carolina um, is the one that shared these seeds um, years ago through the ASCFG. And she makes, she said, it's a cash, it's a cash cow crop. Um, they make wreaths all throughout October and November. Um, so this is, and yeah, you can eat them, they're hot, but they are far more valuable than eating, right? So this is what we will be drying. Um, and so don't miss, and rooster peppers are another one that we had custom grown for us. So there's limited seed available. Um, get it while you can, y'all, because I'm telling you, 
having that, you could sell. Anyway, I'll stop. This was missed, but they can look it up. Oh, so this is not up on the screen. You'll have to look inside the app for it. This is um, pumpkin on a stick. And I have to tell y'all something. The deer ate the entire crop after I got these last week. I have never had them do that before. They ate, they plucked all the fruit off. So protect. But this is pumpkin on a stick. It's actually an eggplant. You can find it here in the app. This is a midsummer plant for us. Can you imagine having tons of this to sell in September and October? Totally love it. Now let's talk eucalyptus. All right. So this is the eucalyptus that I allowed to dry. This is polyanthemus, and I'm going to show you it fresh. And that's not too horribly shriveled, but, you know, that's kind of, it's not too glamorous. This is polyanthemus fresh. This is really, really beautiful, and we have this seed. Y'all, the secret to eucalyptus is to start it about three months before it's time to plant it. It's just like lisianthus. I started in January. This is an amazing, and look at this stem. All of these were cut off of this stem. This would be a grade A florist. This is what we, we'd sell this to in bunches, but this is what we use in our mixed bouquets. Polyanthemus, totally beautiful. Then parvula gum, which is a smaller leaf and a little bit darker. We, that seed's not currently available. If you want to be notified, the minute we get seed, you better get on the wait list. We sell out on the wait list. I love this one. Love it. These were all first-year plants, by the way. I did not overwinter any eucalyptus last year. Two years ago, I did. And this is parvula gum dried. And if this had been, this did not get hung. It was just sitting in a dry bucket. See how it's kind of droopy, if y'all can see that? If it had hung, it probably would look better. And then we have the most popular eucalyptus. This is Silver Dollar. This is the big thick leaf. And you may have seen the post on social media where I showed that I cut all of this off of one big stem. And um, this is amazing bouquet making and florist. And then this is what it looks like dried. Now, oh, there's polyanthemus in the middle of it. So it's okay. Depends on what you're doing with them, right? And what people are doing. And Very so silver. That, Very silvery. Yeah, it's real silvery. This is like the classic eucalyptus. So, friends, it's time to, to wrap up here. And remember to stick around for the Q&A. So, remember that over on our big website, thegardenersworkshop.com, we have so much stuff for y'all over there. There are tons of videos, blogs, um, I mean, there's just so much over there, as well as our two podcasts. We have Field and Garden, which I host, and then we have Seed Talk with Lisa and Lane. And, you know, Lane is our seed manager, avid home gardener, and she had just creates a beautiful slideshow that's over on YouTube. Yesterday's ap episode that dropped was Direct Seeding Troubles with Cool Flowers in the Fall. How timely is that? We've dedicated all of September to cool flower, frequently asked questions, and troubleshooting. So head over to our YouTube channel, you know, sign, I mean, subscribe so you don't miss one, and check those out. Now, I will be hosting Ask a Flower Farmer this week um, on Instagram. It's 1230 on Wednesdays. I'd love to meet you over there. And just remember to meet us back here next week because we're going to be going through indoor seed starting with cool flowers. That'll be a lot of fun. And so, friends, we have a winner, and I hope you're here. You have to be here to claim it. Someone is going to get a $25 store credit dropped right into their cart. So when you go to check out, you're 25 bucks ahead, right? So our winner today is Laura Milner. Laura, if you are here, give us a big shout out in the comments. Um, and let us know you're here, and the girls will drop 25 bucks right into your cart. Thank you so much for participating, and we're so glad that you're here. Now, friends, stick around for the Q&A, because that's what I'm getting ready to do, and I appreciate everybody being here. All right, so let's look at some of these questions. Sorry, I'm just getting some of the debris out here so I can. When the seed packet says lightly cover, 
Do I need to use dry soil to do that or vermiculite? First off, I hate when it says lightly covered. What does that mean? You know, I mean, every time I read it, I'm like, oh, what does that mean? You know, so we don't use vermiculite. There's nothing wrong with using vermiculite. I'm all about the fewest things that I can use and have to keep stocked. Um, vermiculite certainly sprinkled on the top would do that job. What we do, um, and we're testing out, you know, I think I told, I can't remember who I mentioned this to. You know, I'm always testing out new cool flowers. I have one coming along and it was supposed to be super hard to get it to sprout. And needed all this special handling. I thought, shoot, I'm not doing that. Let's try it with soil blocking. And y'all, it started sprouting this morning and it was one that said lightly cover. So what I do for lightly covering is just push it. Instead of just firmly seating it on the surface, I push it a little bit down so that it's further down on the block, but not all the way in. So that's what I do. But you can use vermiculite. There is nothing wrong with that. Wondering how to guesstimate how many stems you might get out of a planted cut flower bed. How do we guess or start to calculate that. Well, you don't find much information on that because there's just way too many variables. And I'll give you a jump off here in a minute, but um, it 100% depends on your skill as a grower and a gardener and your conditions. For instance, um, without throwing anybody under the bus, I saw um, on social media a, a particular plant that I grow that we probably get you know, 15, 20 stems easily off of one plant. And I saw the saddest planting of them single stemmed. You know, there's no branching. Why is that? I don't know. Did they get stunted in the tray? Are they in low light, whatever? And I mean, I actually stopped and had to go in and look. It's like, what is that? And then, and so that's why it's really hard. But as a general rule, there's two types of plants that I grow. I grow single stem, which is like one sunflower head on one sunflower. That's easy to figure out, right? You get one flower per stem. Then I grow branching annuals. And I would say to you as a general jumping off point that I would say to count on at least four stems from a branching. I might get 25 because, you know, I've been doing this for 28 years, doing it over and over. So you need to look at your spacing, which the cut flower handbook has all the spacing information, and then it's like, all right, how many plants are in your bed? And then if you do times four, that'll give you a jumping off point. But the bottom line is you won't know until you grow them and you kind of figure that out, you know? But I will tell you, they don't stop, they don't stop blooming if you treat it like a cutting garden, which is what I teach you in the Cut Flower Handbook. I'm just starting my hydrangea grove. Oh, congratulations. That's the funnest. I love my hydrangea groves. I just love being in them. They're so beautiful, right? Could you share what you recommend on which hydrangeas are best for cut flower bouquets and what fertilizer to use and water care? So um, my hydrangeas were all throwaways from other people and or left, over, left here from Steve's grandma. And they're all the big leaf mop heads. Um, and it depends on where you live in the country, um, whether you grow um, those or paniculatas, which are like PGs. So for me, we grow the big mop heads. There's like Nico Blue. Um, and so we deeply prepare the soil. Hydrangea means water vessel. Those petals are nothing but water. So you want to do everything you can to help them keep all the moisture that they can. So we really, you know, use manures and leaf mold and prep in the soil. We just use general purpose um, fertilizer. I don't do any manipulation trying to change the color of the flowers, which not all will react to that, but some do. I just take whatever hydrangeas blooms come in whatever color. General purpose organic fertilizer. Um, composted manure or any just compost or leaf mold to incorporate that. Then plant your hydrangeas and mulch them deeply. We love using leaves and pine straw, which are naturally acidic. They don't really change the acidity, but they can't hurt, right? Um, and if you live in an area that doesn't get frequent rain like we do, then you might want to consider laying irrigation. Um, so that's my take on that. Um, all hydrangeas classically are good cut flowers. Um, it's just I want those that produce the most, and that's why I grow the big leaves, mop heads. 
what type of fertilizer do you use? Is it the same for everything? And what is your fertilizer schedule? So the only real fertilizing that we do is in the trays, the weekly liquid that I speak of so often. Then when we prepare beds out in the field, we use the organic dry fertilizer, which you'll find over on our big website. I think small bags are here in the app, but you can find larger bags over on our website. Total description tells you what the um, values are. We prepare the beds with that, and then that's pretty much it because we apply a lot of compost, a lot of leaf mold and cover crops in our succession planting here on our farm. So we know because we demand a lot from our soil that we have to put more back into our soil, right? It's not like a home garden where you got a landscape. You got lands, I wouldn't fertilize a landscape. I mean, that's just me personally. They're just out there growing. And if you're mulching like you should, that's taking care of that. Um, so we do it at planting and then each time we flip a bed every crop planting gets a bed prep and that part of that bed prep is using the dry fertilizer um i just recently hopped i can't see what time it is oh there it is oh 118 we are really over today this is the last question i just recently hopped on the dried flower wagon congratulations you know what when I hopped on like three years ago, I just couldn't believe I haven't been doing this my entire career as a cut flower farmer. Been decorating small pumpkins. Would you consider doing a short talk on the best time to cut, best way to dry, best way to store? Um, I don't know about doing a short talk, but I will tell you something that I have learned, particularly this year. Now is not the time to be cutting flowers to dry. We just checked many of the flowers from the last couple of weeks that we've hung and they're all mildewed. And it's because they have too much moisture content when is the best time to cut and dry in the dead of summer in a drought and if it's not drought you need to have several days of no rain then you harvest and hang them um, because there's so much more moisture content than you think if you live in a area like we do that's hot and humid so that's the best time to cut we just hang we know that susie and kelly who actually do our bunching to hang from the show Smaller bunches are better than big old thick bunches. Um, and then we don't store them. You know, we um, hang them from the ceiling. We bring them down. And I'm going to turn this. And, you know, that's our display over there, that wall. That is purely a backdrop for me during the winter. Um, so if I was going to be using them, I would be looking to get rid of them immediately when they come down. It's like, okay, I'm doing a farmer's market in November, October. You start bringing them down, sleeving them for sure. And in fact, um, the master class in my club, I think it's going to be coming in October. Um, is it? I can't remember when it's coming. There is one coming. Just showing about the different ways. I'm pretty sure it is in October. Showing like sleeving the dried flowers, just different options for that. Um, but that's what my take would be. So friends, thank you so much for joining us here today. I'm so glad you got to be in my grow room. That was pretty fun. Um, and till we meet again, friends, ciao.